Um, hi everyone, I'm Ruan Ratnayaka. I'll present an update on our study in, um, in uh, Democratic Republic of Congo on case area targeted interventions. And again, we're going to be giving some preliminary results, some operational results as where the effectiveness uh, part is ongoing in terms of the analysis. So here's a short overview of um, CATI. Um, CATI is based on the early detection of cholera cases and rapid response to the uh, uh, new cases within the high-risk area around households where, where cholera cases occur. And it's based on two principles, delivering multiple interventions, uh, addressing multiple transmission routes, and then being extremely reactive to those, uh, to, to those cases that occur uh, as the index cases. Um, currently, um, CAT is carried out in various forms by UNICEF, uh, MSF, and others, but there isn't a lot of information on effectiveness, especially in terms of effectiveness when a vaccine is included as well. Um, so it's rarely included in, in, in this uh, approach. We believe it could work well, especially in the beginning of an outbreak, uh, as you can see in the epicurve or at the end, to really contain small outbreaks as they're occurring. Um, so here's a little bit on the MSF um, experience. So MSF and Epicentre work together to uh, create a CATI strategy. So the intervention includes a single dose of oral cholera vaccine, a hygiene kit, uh, and health promotion, and uh, as well antibiotic chemoprophylaxis um, uh, given to primary and adjacent households only. Um, and this is done within a 100 uh, meter ring radius around um, index cases when they happen. And the aim is to launch CATIs for every case that occurs uh, within five days of case presentation to a, to a CTU. Um, and so Epicentre did a prospective observational study to accompany um, the operational um, implementation of CATI in uh, different sites in Democratic Republic Congo. And uh, you know, we measured number of secondary cases in each ring where CATI was implemented, the coverage uh, of these intervention in each ring some weeks later, and documented, documentation of the resources required to, to, to do so. So I'll present some preliminary results. Um, again, not the effectiveness uh, as yet. So implementation of CATI occurred from April 2022 to April 2023, and that amounted to 118 rings around these primary cases um, that were included in the study, uh, that will be included in the study. Um, and that covers five sites in four provinces implemented by four different MSF sections, as you can see in the table and the map. So what you see here is the number of households per ring in the different sites on the left and the number of uh, the administrative coverage of vaccination of that single dose that was given um, on the right. And so in general, we see the median number of households um, in, in each ring is uh, 69 households and that there was a maximum of uh, 200 households in uh, nearly 200 households in another uh, more urban site uh, that, that's contained. Administrative coverage of vaccination is around 89%, which is pretty good, but you can see that there's lots of variation between the different sites and even you know, within the sites between the different rings. Um, so what we see here is the timing of various interventions. So um, the days since the symptom onset of, uh, of the primary case of the index case in that, in that particular ring is noted on the bottom. The different sites are noted on, on the, uh, the y-axis and the different interventions are noted by different colors um, and, and those lines. So what we see here is the time to start CATI is a median of two days, so, so pretty quick. The time to start vaccination happens a little bit after, a uh, median of three and a half days. And sometimes that was due to operational constraints, the usual stuff in terms of getting vaccines to a specific site, distributing them and so forth. Um, the time to distribute hygiene kits, which is the kind of maroon color, uh, varied as well, and, and that was due to um, different delays in, in operations and in getting the kits together, getting them to the site and so forth. Um, health promotion activities are in red, and we can see that they, they started early and lasted sometimes weeks after CATI was done. That was really to, to promote uptake of the different interventions, um, as you can imagine. Um, and to, to increase the, the sort of effect of CATI once those teams had left. 
Um, so what we see here is uh, our, our measure of effectiveness in kind of a raw format. That is the secondary cases that were recorded in each ring in days two to 30 days after um, the onset of symptoms of the primary case. And that was really to capture a few serial intervals worth of, um, of, of, um, of time after that uh, primary case had been um, identified. Um, so as you can see for the majority of sites in that first and second column, you know, the 75th percentile of the number of secondary cases implemented um, is in implemented rings is, is zero, i.e. three quarters of rings had had no secondary cases. Um, so, you know, we, we still have to um, look at really what that means in terms of effectiveness, but at least within the rings, the measurement within the rings shows that there's very few uh, secondary cases. Um, so now we'll just talk about what we can kind of glean from some of that data, um, which is rather administrative and operational. Um, at least we know right now that rapid Im implementation of CATI is possible when it's done systematically. So um, CATI was init initiated within two days uh, median, and vaccination is initiated within three and a half days. Um, um, so that's, that's pretty good in terms of being reactive and getting those teams on site and getting those interventions in place to be able to cover those rings of 100 meters um, in, in sufficient time, in a timely way. Um, we also saw good administrative coverage, at least of that first dose um, of 89%. We did conduct coverage surveys afterwards as well, some weeks later, to look at uptake of the various interventions, as well as vaccination coverage. So we'll know more about that soon as well. Um, what we did see was a wide variation in, um, in, in the kind of setup and turnaround times between the sites and between rings, and that sort of reflects the different ways the different MSF teams went about um, going and carrying out um, CATI in those different sites and what their operational constraints were. And then in terms of effectiveness, we're, we're getting there, we'll understand more, but more than 75% of the rings had no secondary cases. So we hope to analyze um, per protocol the effectiveness um, and, and coverage. Uh, we also know, um, yeah, and, and hoping to have that uh, to kind of explain that a little bit more and then know the broader outbreak dynamics um, outside of the rings as well. Um, so one uh, important piece is that we're learning is the operational limits for CATI. So this is just one example due to time. I won't go into so much detail, but we saw a big spike in um, cholera suspected cases that was due to uh, an increase in displaced people and infections in a, in a camp that was near uh, an MSF CTU. So it was impossible to do CATI systematically and that triggered a change to a lighter response or a more traditional cholera response um, that would, that would uh, address that whole community. Um, so we, you know, it does beg the question, what are the criteria for changing the strategy when it outstrips the capacity to do that you know, rapid response to small outbreaks? So what we're interested in going forward is a few points. What will the CADI strategy look like implemented um, with DRC in uh, Ministry of Health in the future? How does that fold into the cholera preparedness and response plan? Um, and, and what were the caveats for you know, um, triggering that strategy versus other strategies? Um, we want to be able to influence the GTFCC uh, eventual, hopefully, guidelines in this area as well. So we hope to um, contribute to that and influence that with the results from this study. And uh, of course, the key question is how do we factor in vaccines? Um, and we'll um, look at um, ways of influencing the idea that CATI could, if effective, rapidly, re uh, rapidly um, reach those populations most at risk and use fewer vaccines to hopefully quell those um, small outbreaks. So it is a way in a way to address uh, the cholera vaccine shortage. Um, thank you to everyone involved in the study, particularly operational teams from the Ministry of Health and MSF um, in, um, in uh, different parts of Congo.